Today I'm going to give my top three tips and misconceptions about perfume. As someone who makes perfume myself, this is the advice I would give. I'm going to talk about making your perfume last longer, I'm going to talk about naturals versus synthetics, and I'm going to talk about the coffee beans you get in perfume shops. Stay tuned. Okay, so the first topic is making your perfume last longer. A lot of people ask the question, how can I get my perfume to last longer? Well, to understand that, you basically got to understand that the longevity of a perfume or how long it lasts really boils down to two factors. One of those is concentration, and the other factor is actually the composition of the perfume. What notes are inside the perfume? Okay then, so firstly, concentration. You may have noticed when you buy perfume in the shop that sometimes they have some labels attached, like EDP, EDT, or EDC. What these letters basically stand for is EDP, Eau de Parfum, EDT, Eau de Toilette, and EDC, Eau de Cologne. And what these basically denote is the actual concentration of the fragrance inside the perfume. So if I look at this perfume bottle, for example, you can see written beneath the name is Eau de Parfum. When you see perfume in a shop, you may even notice that sometimes they have the same perfume in the same size bottle, but it's sold at two different prices. The reason for this is sometimes you have an EDP Eau de Parfum version and an EDT Eau de Toilette version. What that basically means is the Eau de Toilette version is a bit more diluted, it's a bit weaker, and that's usually the cheaper one, which is why if you use the EDT one, it will be cheaper, but it will also last a bit less longer. To get an idea for these concentrations, usually an EDP Eau de Parfum is 20 to 25% of the fragrance concentrate in the perfume. When you have an EDT, that's usually something like 10 to 15% fragrance concentrate. If you go down to an EDC, an Eau de Cologne, that's usually less than 5%. So if you buy an Eau de Cologne, that's really a weak kind of perfume that you just use to spritz on yourself and give you a little scent for an hour or two, but don't really expect any more after that from an EDC. Anyway, that's concentration. The other factor we have is the composition itself. Now, perfumes are made up of what are called top, middle, and base notes. And all that really means is the different smelling notes that you find in the perfume, some of them are top notes, which don't last for very long, and some of them are base notes, which last a long time. So what this means is the actual smells, the actual notes in your perfume will actually help determine how long that perfume lasts. As a general rule, citruses are top notes, things like florals are mid notes, and for base notes, you have things like woods, things like musks, ambers, vanilla, that kind of thing. So basically what you can tell from this is if you see a perfume that's a nice, fresh, summery scent, but you can see that it only really contains citrus notes like lemon, lime, mandarin, that kind of thing, then you can almost guarantee that it's not going to last a very long time, probably only an hour or two, even if it's at a high concentration, so an EDP Eau de Parfum concentration. On the other hand, if your perfume's got a lot of base notes, so things like woods and musks, you can be pretty sure that that fragrance is gonna last a long time, even if it's a lower concentration, say an Eau de Toilette instead of an Eau de Parfum. Right then, so that's some advice if you're looking for a new perfume and you want it to last a long time. What on the other hand, if you've already got a perfume and you really like it, but then you wanna make that last a bit longer? Well, the greatest advice that I could give in that case is actually spray it on your clothes instead of on your skin. Now, the real reason for this is that your body temperature, the heat coming out of your skin, actually helps evaporate the perfume. And that causes all of the molecules in the perfume to evaporate off and leave quicker, which means your perfume kind of gets dissipated off of your skin. On the other hand, if you spray on your clothes, because your clothes are much cooler because they're further away from your body, the perfume will actually sit there a bit longer before it all evaporates off. The other thing about your clothes is they're actually porous on a microscopic level. All the fibers in your clothes, they can actually act like little sponges and soak up the perfume. And that helps lock in the scent and hold onto it for a longer time, meaning your perfume gets released over a longer period. That said, the only piece of advice I would give is be careful with dark colored perfumes on light clothes. If you've got something like a white shirt or a white dress, I wouldn't recommend using a very dark colored perfume just because it might stain. In that case, what I'd recommend is maybe take something like a white dishcloth and test your perfume out on that and see if it stains beforehand so you know if it will be safe or not on your clothes. Another common misconception is that it's good to rub your wrists together after applying perfume. This is actually really bad, and the reason for that is because when you rub your wrists together, you're creating heat, you're creating friction. And what happens from that heat is all of the top notes in your perfume 
pick up that heat and they evaporate off straight away. So what you're doing essentially is flattening your perfume. You're making it smell a bit more flat. You're losing the top notes. Anyway, so the next topic is olfactory fatigue. Now olfactory fatigue is basically the process that happens when your nose gets used to a smell. So if you put on a perfume, you'll probably notice after a couple of minutes, you won't actually be able to smell it anymore. But that doesn't mean that other people can't smell it. Someone who walks in the room will be able to smell it. It's just you that have become used to the smell. Humans basically evolved to have this natural mechanism where the nose gets used to things. And that's because there's so many smells actually happening in the environment around us. If we could smell everything all the time, we would always be focusing on all the different smells that there are. So by this effect of olfactory fatigue, what basically happens is once a smell has been introduced into the environment around you, after a minute or so, you start to get used to it. And that allows you to focus on any new incoming smells in case they signify something important. This is exactly the same effect that happens when you're cooking. If you go and cook a nice meal, you'll smell it for the first two minutes or so, but then you won't be able to smell it anymore and you'll wonder if this food is actually smelling nice. But you probably know that if you go out of the room and come back in, then you'll smell it again. And it's exactly the same thing here that's going on. Now, the reason that I'm saying all of this is twofold, because it comes up firstly when you're using your perfume, but secondly, when you're actually choosing a perfume. So you may have been to perfume shops and smelled a load of perfumes. And what happens when you smell a lot of perfumes in a short period of time is that this olfactory fatigue builds up very quickly. So after you smell two or three different perfumes, the next perfumes that you smell are gonna to start to become distorted because of that olfactory fatigue from the perfumes you've just smelled before. Now, one common myth is that coffee beans actually will help clear out the nose so that you can smell a new perfume. But a scientific paper actually did a study on this and they found that there was absolutely no correlation between coffee beans and refreshing your nose. In fact, the best thing that you can actually do is just take a step outside and get some fresh air. If you're going to a perfume shop and trying to choose a new perfume, I would actually recommend that you only smell a couple of perfumes at a time and then you go outside, refresh your nose, come back later and smell them with a fresh nose. All right, and then what about when you're using a perfume? Well, if you want to know if you've put on the right amount of perfume, so you wanna make sure you haven't put too much so you don't smell really strongly and everyone in the room knows that you've got this massive perfume, which could be a bit annoying, but at the same time, you wanna make sure that your perfume is actually there, people notice it, then what I think the best thing to do is simply just ask a friend, hey, can you smell my perfume? And that's the best way to find out over time how many sprays of perfume you need for you. And once you've kind of got that number, maybe it's two or three sprays, it might change if you put it on your skin or on your clothes, then you can be confident that that amount of sprays is the right amount of sprays for you. And you don't have to kind of work out, hmm, can I smell it or not anymore? Because you'll know that that's about right. Okay, and then the final topic, which is naturals versus synthetics. Now, I wanted to clear up the long-standing misconception that natural perfumes are better than synthetic perfumes. Right, so before I explain why, I'll quickly explain what naturals and synthetics are. Natural ingredients, things like essential oils, are basically things which have been extracted from plants to leave some kind of oil, which is a mixture of molecules which can be used in perfume. On the other hand, synthetics are when that molecule is created directly in a lab and then that goes on to be used in the perfume. Anyway, the thing that most people don't actually realize is that naturals can be quite dangerous. Now, the reason for this is that, well, these essential oils, the plant is actually producing these originally in the first place in order to, yes, attract some insects, but also to repel predators, things like parasites and animals that might be looking to eat the plant. The essential oils are the plant's way of protecting against those threats. When we take those molecules out of the plant, some of those fragrant molecules are actually allergens, which is why there have to be safety laws in perfumery and safety standards to stop people getting things like rashes on the skin. They actually limit the concentration of certain molecules that could be harmful for you. Now, on the other hand, we have these synthetic ingredients which are created in a lab. And the good thing about the synthetic ingredients is that they can actually be made to a really, really high purity with a lot of quality control checks. This is a bit like when you make medicines in a lab, things like paracetamol. You have a chance to do a lot of analysis on the final product to make sure that it's pure and there's nothing else nasty inside of it. Now, the other point to consider is it's much harder to make perfumes that smell really nice using only naturals compared to perfumes which incorporate both naturals and synthetics, which is the vast majority of perfumes. The reason for this is that when you just use naturals, you're limited to the kind of whole mixtures of molecules that the naturals provide. One kind of analogy that I would liken this to is think about with colors. 
if you're using things like only natural colors, say you're only using natural dyes, all of the colors that you're going to use for the most part are going to be muddy greens and muddy browns. You may get a few things here and there, like a blue from a certain plant or a red from a different plant. But when, on the other hand, you have kind of synthetic colors which are made out of a computer screen, you can get things like bright greens, bright reds, bright blue, and you can have the whole range of colors giving you complete access to make an image or make a work of art exactly how you want it to look. It's no different with perfumery. In fact, many molecules that are easy to create as synthetics are almost impossible to extract directly from nature. This is actually the case for most fruity molecules. So in most cases, if you have a fruity note in a perfume, that's due to a synthetic molecule. It's almost impossible to extract the same aromas out of a real fruit because the concentration of those aromas in the real fruit is just so low. Anyway, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed the video, regardless of whether you're interested in making your own perfume or if you just want to wear perfume. If you are interested in making your own perfume, definitely check out my channel, subscribe and look at my other videos because I give all of the information and teach you how to go and make your own perfumes from scratch. Apart from that, have a great week and see you next time.